Hi there. Thanks for stopping back. Today's video is about that awkward moment when you encounter a crossword puzzle and you are supposed to help your student lead your student to identifying the word that belongs either down or across on the slide with very little incidental language. How do you do that? With a student who, number one, does not know what across means, may know what down means, but how do you teach a student to spell a word going up and down and across in a crossword puzzle? This was a dilemma for me for quite a while, I admit. I came across it early on in my teaching and over and over again, I just felt completely tripped up over this. So I encountered in two different classes today the crossword puzzle dilemma and I thought, oh yeah! That would be another video that maybe you can put to good use. So this is what I do. In my first example, the two words that needed to be spelled were before and should. I often begin with the words going down to illustrate that we can read words in a different way as opposed to left and right with the across, but we can't use all of those words, we can also read going up and down. I don't say any of that though. I only say this. Spell before. And I write it like so. Just like it needs to be filled in on the slide. Before. B E F O R E. Good. Okay. Spell should. So when I create the visual layout that mimics what they are to do on the screen, no questions asked. They know exactly what to do. Should. Before. Okay. I'll give you another example. Different classroom. We were working on S blends. This just happened. Um, S blends. We were dealing with pictures of a snake, smoke, a snail, and small, right? S blends. So I started with the word, the first word, going down. small. And I will often give them, if the student is hesitant, unsure about which word to begin with or how to do this, I'll fill in a couple of the letters um, and let them, for example, I'll leave the vowel blank um, because vowels are a whole, a whole different category of complex. And so I'm always targeting vowels as a way to enrich their understanding and their pronunciation and so on. So, small, the next word. So I circled the image that represents small. Then I circle the next image. It was a snake. Notice how I leave some space on either side of this crossword puzzle because I need to borrow right these letters for the other vocabulary words in the lesson. The next word was snail. I circle the snail. Snail. And then I circle the smoke. I could have done a better job with my layout, but the gist of it is this layout is exactly how it is written on this slide. Anyway, that's how I handle that dilemma. I hope you can put that to good use. Thank you for stopping by and happy teaching.